One of the natural ways to lift your mood if you're feeling depressed is to take regular exercise. But exercise is also thought to prevent depression in the first place. The question is though, for prevention, which is the best exercise? And that's what a group of British researchers have been asking using a large section of the Norwegian population. Can physical activity be used to try and prevent some cases of depression? Because people are using it to treat. Yes. They are using it to treat. It tends to mainly be used in people with mild depression. And I guess that's because one of the difficulties with using exercise to treat depression is when people are depressed, they often have difficulty with their levels of energy, their levels of motivation, their desire to really go out and socialise. And I think that can make it very difficult for depressed people to exercise. What we were more interested in was if you have a population of non-depressed people and if you can get them being a little more active, does that help prevent new cases of depression? But going back to your Norwegian study, what did yes. you find? So what we found was that people who were more active in their leisure time were less likely to be depressed. So if you were inactive, you were around 60 to 80% more likely to be suffering from depression than someone who was exercising, for example, three hours or more per week. That wasn't terribly surprising. I think we knew we were likely to find that from stuff that had been done before. What was interesting was that the intensity of activity you're undertaking had no impact upon that. Doing light activity, such as walking, was just as beneficial as doing something very strenuous. But the sort of the context of the exercise seemed to be vital. So if you're doing a lot of physical activity at work, that didn't seem to have any psychological benefits. It seemed to be very much around the context. And it was something about you being active in your leisure time that created those benefits rather than just the physical activity per se. And was there a time link? In other words, how much time you spent exercising, even if there wasn't a relationship with how intense it was? There was a bit of a dose response with time. So certainly, although that seemed to level out after the first few hours. So doing two hours a week seemed to be better than doing one hour a week. But as it sort of got further beyond that, the, the actual amount of benefit accrued seemed to decrease. Now this was what people call a cross-sectional study, you know, a yes. slice in time, yes. looking at these people and you don't actually see them through time. No. It could be, coming back to your comment earlier about depressed people, is that they find it very hard to activate themselves and get out. Yes. And could it just be that um, depressed people didn't feel like going out and exercising after work? Yeah, that's the key problem with this sort of study, that you don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg. And there is, there is ample evidence that, that depressed people find exercising more difficult. So that's definitely a major limitation from this and that's now why we're following that same group of people going forward in time. Was there any hints from it that there might be a cause and effect relationship? Not that we could get from the data, no. If you take the more optimistic view of this research, which is that there is a cause and effect relationship, yes. it may well be that it's the fact that you are doing it with other people, you're getting out and about, that makes you feel better as much as the fact that you're getting your heart going and there's something happening in your brain with endorphins. Well, that seems to be the message. And one, the other thing that we could do with the data, because we had measures of heart rate, we had measures of how many friends you had, how often you saw your friends, we were able to try and look at some of those questions specifically and to build statistical models to try and include some of those things. And certainly what we found is you're right, that actually the, 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 some of the physical results of exercise, such as, for example, having a lower resting pulse, which we know very active people do, those sort of physical changes of exercise don't seem to be important in mediating the relationship between physical activity and depression. It seems to be those social things about how, often, how many friends you have, how supportive those friends are. What we are now wanting to go on and do is to take that a step further and to say, well, OK, if that's important, does it make a difference whether you're doing individual sport as opposed to team sport? I was going to say that. You didn't ask whether, what sort of, you know, whether or not they were out in a walking group or they were playing no, you know, they, football. They didn't ask that in that, in that survey, but we've, we've, uh, there's a new survey underway where they do ask those sorts of questions, which we're hoping to be able to look at this in some more detail. You can't do lifestyle research like this and get accurate answers unless you involve huge numbers of people. And that, in fact, is why the British researchers went to Scandinavia to find the answers. Scandinavians are particularly good at collecting data on themselves and they had done really what was the largest ever health survey where they'd gone to an entire region of Norway and asked everybody who lived there to be involved in this survey. 
So out of the 80 or 90,000 people that lived in this region, they got data on about 60,000, and we had data which we could use on about 40,000 people. So it was a massive survey. And amongst all of those 40,000 people, we knew how often they engaged in leisure time physical activity. When they did exercise, whether it was very intense activity or whether it was more light activity, such as walking, and then we also knew about their levels of physical activity in the workplace, and we were able to look at each of those compared to their levels of depression and their levels of anxiety.